Hi guys, this is a video on the Ubuntu operating system from the point of view of a Windows Power user. Now, I've been using Ubuntu as, as a primary operating system for the past day. And um, you'll know from a previous video that I've been talking about Compiz Fusion and all the wobbly desktop effects that you get. Um, but that's pretty much all I've been using Ubuntu for. So I thought I'd give myself a day to learn some new stuff about it and um, see if I can do the daily tasks that I do on Windows. And overall, I have to say, it's been a really positive experience. So um, let's start with my desktop. Over here I have my, um, my icons I talked about previously. You can access your NTFS partitions, uh, which are the Windows partitions. You can actually access them inside Ubuntu. Um, at the bottom I have a dock. It's called the Adv Avant Window Manager. It's got shortcuts to my frequently used applications, which are Firefox, Thunderbird, Pigeon, Rhythmbox, Zatu, and uh, XChat, and also VirtualBox. Um, it also shows the windows that you have open. Um, and uh, I, as you can see at the top, this is the standard bar that you get with Ubuntu, but I've customized it a little bit. Now, what I've actually done is used a customized theme. So I'm just going to open up Firefox to show you where I got it from. I went to gnomelook.org gnome-look.org Sorry if you can hear me typing there. Um, so I went to the highest rated and basically downloaded it. Now what happens is when you go to download it, uh, you'll get a .tar.gz file on your desktop. It's similar to a zip file. In the Linux world you call it a tarball. And all you have to do is go to system preferences appearance and then the install button so we'll see if it's there we go it's behind here it, the install button here you can locate your um, .tar.gz file and then you can install your theme and it will sort everything out for you now the great thing about this is also that you can customize it and you can have specific looks for your desktop so if I wanted to have mist or mist um, controls then I can change it if I want to have specific colors if I wanted to have a specific border um, it's really customizable and it does remind me a lot of uh, window blinds uh, which actually you have to pay for and all the desktop effects that with Compiz are also um, I think done by window blinds which again you have to pay for but it's all free on, um, on Ubuntu also icons, you can change the icons to an icon set you like that's set by default inside Ubuntu um, which is similar to icon packager and also the pointer uh, which is your mouse cursor um, you can change the background obviously, I have my little dragon background if you want to know how to get this uh, just go to my website, I've got some ones that are pre-made for you um, I've changed my fonts to smaller ones and o, o hot bold or Al hot bold or something whatever uh, interface so you can edit your menus shortcuts which you can't even do in Windows and the extra um, desktop effects which is the Compass Fusion um, where I can make all my windows wobbly and I can also do things like um, a, a cover flow so I can do if I do windows and tab a sort of cover flows tab switching or alt and tab it just makes it nice to look at okay so that's installing a theme now I'm just going to go through my um, virtual desktops because I have four at the moment just show you what I'm using on each one so this was my first one, I've got my instant messaging over here, which is Pigeon, which I'm used to using, I love it, it's free, it's free and you can get it for Windows. Um, on my next virtual desktop I have, <coughs> excuse me, my Thunderbird, which is my email, so it says I've got four to read, and um, it's um, basically exactly the same as my first one, except it's got my email full screen. So I can search and I can chat, and then I can switch across, and there's my email. Um, my other virtual desktop down on my bottom left is VirtualBox, which I've talked about before. And if you want to try out Ubuntu, I strongly recommend getting it for Windows. Um, what I've just demonstrated there is dragging it onto any virtual desktop you like just by moving it to the edge of the screen. And what VirtualBox allows you to do inside, inside um, Ubuntu is seamless mode which is great because now it looks like I've got Windows running on my system. Uh, I can do my computer, um, my documents, I can start my Windows applications and it does it seamlessly without having a virtual machine box and obviously I can then switch back with the control and L and it switches straight back to my virtual machine. So this is ideal if you want to run things like, I don't know, Adobe or um, Microsoft Office or anything like that that you can't run inside, uh, inside Ubuntu. So that's my virtual machine. My bottom right, I have XChat, which is an IRC um, 
client and if you don't know what IRC is, picture it as just a chat room, this is just the IRC area, chat room area and it, by default I was connected to the Ubuntu UK server um, I also connected to the Ubuntu server manually and I have to say that it's really worth doing getting this um, X chat and going into these chat rooms because um, you can use it as sort of a live support so um, I actually asked quite a lot of things about it and um, I asked a lot of things that I couldn't do in Ubuntu by default and I couldn't be bothered to read the um, web pages so these guys actually helped me out um, so is there an open source VM solution for Ubuntu I want to emulate my Windows XP and you can see straight away someone's come back with VirtualBox VirtualBox so um, it's really worth ha having that there and I have it on all the time because in case anything happens on Ubuntu and I don't know what to do click to IRC and there's my live help so it's really useful to have um, so if I go to my um, my computer or the equivalent to my computer on um, Ubuntu you can see it looks fairly similar to the uh, Windows Vista because you have all the common places you search down the side I have vi videos, pictures, music, documents I also connected to an FTP server so let's put that in here as well and uh, the file system inside um, Ubuntu and as you can see with my custom theme again it looks a lot different than it would do as um, if it was normal, normally there you can zoom out and zoom in on your icons or you can set them as default so your desktop ones look the same uh, if you want to make your icons smaller and um, that's pretty much it in terms of the my computer um, so I've installed quite a few custom applications um, if I show you I've installed uh, for example VirtualBox that wasn't installed by default um, I've also installed Audacity um, Audacity is available um, most of the open source stuff you see you can get I've got FileZilla that wasn't installed Thunderbird I installed um, and the great thing about Ubuntu is it's really easy to install applications um, what would you do inside Windows? You'd go to um, Firefox or whatever you use, you'd search for something, I don't know, FileZilla, you'd go on the first link, FileZilla homepage, you'd download the executable file, you'd then double click it, you'd then choose where it goes, you'd then go the typical install, and you go next, next, and then finish, and then you'd have a FileZilla thing in the start menu, and it'd be all unorganized. But inside Ubuntu, it makes it a hell of a lot easier. You just go to Applications, and then Add Remove. And then what you get is a Manager. Now, what you can also do instead of this is um, use something called the Synaptic Package Manager, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, or you can use the Command Line, or you can download, I think it's Deb files, which you are similar to XE files. You double-click and you install them. So um, if I want to install something, let me choose something to install... Um, Blender. That's the that's how my um, introduction has been made on my videos. Um, so I'm just going to click that and click Apply Changes and click Apply. And all it's going to do is ask me for my password, similar to UAC but a lot less annoying. And um, UAC for Vista that is. And it will then start downloading the package to install Blender. Now, if you want to know what packages, it's basically the things that are needed to run your programs. So you can see that I'm downloading it at quite a fast rate of speed. I have it in three seconds. And Blender is the 3D modeler. Now, what would normally happen is um, in Windows, you'd install it and then it would have its own folder or whatever. But inside Linux, it actually installs, or inside Ubuntu, it installs itself into the appropriate category in your applications menu. So hopefully, this will install itself into graphics. Um, you can also edit the menus by right clicking, edit menus, and then you can see that you have a bunch of um, menus that you can modify. Oh no, sorry, that's um, that's different. This is the one we want, isn't it? There we go. You can add menus, DB and education, programming if you really want to. But anyway, um, new application has been installed. Simple as that. Close it. And if we, uh, oops, I just start a calculator. Uh, if we go over to here and go, oops, oh dear, making a hash of things. Sorry, guys. All right, there we go. Let's go over here. Um, I'm not used to the uh, desktop zoom, so applications, graphics, there we go, Blender, full screen or Blender, Windows. So it put itself into graphics, how cool is that? It just saves you doing it yourself. Um, so it's got a lot of features that I wish that Windows had. Um, so that is installing applications and how easy that is. You can also go into the uh, Synaptic Package Manager, that's useful if you want to um, get resources for applications that you haven't installed using um, this add remove. You can also use the terminal, which I'm trying to avoid at the moment. Terminal is um, 
it's just like the DOS prompt inside Windows. Uh, it has different commands, but I'm trying to avoid it because I don't want to confuse people. Um, most of the things that you can do can be done with the GUI, which is the graphical user interface, which is point and click, as you can see I'm doing here. So um, that was installing applications. So it's really easy to find things and really easy to install things and use because most of the applications, if you're used to using free ones on um, Windows um, on the Windows operating system, you will definitely feel right at home inside Ubuntu. Um, now, it may not work on everyone's hardware. That's the thing. Um, some people may have problems getting wireless networks working. Some people may have problems with their graphics. And there's the issue with some things not being free and it being um, not legal in some countries or against morales. Um, that's um, that's um, it's just um, how it is. Because um, I know from the add remove programs, if you go into it by default, you're only um, shown the supported applications. Uh, so you can see all these ones, but um, I actually chose to all available, and it says show all applications, including ones which are possibly restricted by law or copyright. So um, I just use that anyway. So as you can see, it's so it's got a lot of um, time savers. Um, I recommend using VirtualBox, which you can download from Windows XP for free. I've done a video on it, and um, you can try out Ubuntu for yourself, customize it, see what you think, see if you can use it. Um, if you're willing to um, get dirty, then partition your hard drive and uh, put Ubuntu onto it. It will install the Grub um, Partition Manager, which is like a menu, and you can then switch between them. Um, so it's um, it's really nice to have. I'm, I really have been enjoying Ubuntu, and uh, I hope this is a. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. It's just a tour of. Um, what I've learned so far using Ubuntu. I'm sure there's a lot more to learn um, or there's something that I'm doing wrong at some point. But thanks for watching my video. Please comment, rate, subscribe if you like my videos. And thanks again.